Good morning everybody, it's Michael here again with your latest supply and demand market report. This video is going to be looking at indices um, and we'll pick off from where we left off last time. Before we begin, just a reminder that this is purely for educational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor and none of the information shared is a solicitation for you to do anything with your money. All right, let's start with um, the Nikkei. Let's start with Japan. So. What kind of week have we had in, in Japan? Let me take off these arrows because they're blocking me. So we've had a, an indecisive week. We've, we tried to go up, we came back down, tried to go down, came back up, and we closed pretty much around the same area where we started. You can see the in detail of the information of how the week went here on the daily chart. And it's that we're still negotiating this demand zone that's been tested you know, two or three times here. The, Better levels are still below, which is, as we've said a few times on these videos, the, the area of the previous all-time highs. Um, we are, we have consolidated, still consolidating in this upper area. Again, you can see the detail all, all in here. So nothing much has changed. Um, we'll see how the next week progresses, but for now, it's still nothing really to do on these time frames, not on the intraday time frames. You know, smaller time frames will have more opportunities. They'll also have more false positive opportunities. So the skill level, the discrimination you give to your levels will also be important the lower you go, just because there are so many options to choose from. So just be mindful of that. But for these time frames that we're looking at, nothing much has changed. Um, new information has been added, but it's not being made a, a big difference. All right. Let's go to Germany real quick. So Germany had a really, really strong week. We had a, an immediate return into a supply zone on the daily. Really strong week. You can see from pretty much Monday, we started rising and big moves each day back into that range. Again, an attempt to leave the range was made um, last week. Not, not this week, just gone the week before. You can see that here with these lows. And we, we were talking about it last, last time we were together, that there was a really significant move. Now we've come back up. Now, for those of you who know how I trade and, and have watched previous videos, you'll know that this is not our ideal scenario for going short because of that immediate return, that railroad track type of move. It's a often a trap move in my experience um, so markets have tried to start going down but they've been rejected that imbalance that we talk about which you see here on the daily chart this imbalance here has been rejected by the markets and it's now gone straight back again so often a, a failed attempt to gain traction in one direction met with selling um, immediately so just bear that in mind it's it's not the ideal scenario for us to go um, for us to go short not the way that I trade anyway okay so that's that one um, and let's now go on to the Russell 2000 so the Russell 2000 is interesting we talked about this not falling from this area um, last week when we met together and it's now risen deeper into that level you can see again most of the week it was a continuous rise as you see here so it's leaving the basing area or at least attempting to by going through these lows here it's leaving the basing area and trying to break out it hasn't fully broken out yet you still have levels there that you you haven't gone through obviously this one is the first one it's going to come into contact with so we'll see um, how it does for now we've got a little bit of demand in here but it's it's obviously not ideal because of the location where it is so it's not one that you know I would be trading I noticed that it's there um, but it maybe if we eventually do get a move out to the upside then that might be you know more palatable for us to to take a, as a trade but not for now so that's what we've got still in the range, but we've had a significant move. Let's see if it gains traction and goes goes up higher, and then we'll see. Okay, and let's go to the 
FTSE 100 also had a positive week. The FTSE did. Um, it's this demand zone that we've marked out for weeks now is still in play. It's what is holding price, as you'll see there. You see, it, it didn't make it back to its own supply zone like um, the Russell 2000 did. It didn't make it back, and we've got that supply zone still intact there, um, waiting to see if prices will get up there. So this would not be an immediate return if it were to come back into that embedded, or is it? You know what? I think it is because that's a drop base drop and it's an immediate, it's already testing that whole region. So yeah, again, yeah, it wouldn't meet my criteria. It might meet other people's criteria, but not the way that I trade supply and demand. So it wouldn't meet my criteria. So I will pass on that one, but it is definitely something that I notice. It's just not the way that I trade. Okay. And looking at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ also had a significant week. You can see that it's testing into the drop base drop supply. The problem with this is, you know, how close are the, how close are the buyers going to be if we do get a fall from that supply? And besides, remember, we would be fighting an uptrend that has been significantly strong. Extended, yes, because we have one, you know, two, and now three, maybe even four, if you count that as, you know, continuation the trend just not pulling back just making rally based rallies and just continuing to the upside so the first pullback is often a, an aggressive trade uh, because of just how far market has moved so yeah it's the profit margin between these two levels is not the greatest as you can see so one option is for this to clear out and making the profit margin better and then we move in we, we will be able to buy this or we start coming down from here and we base in this area let me take out these arrows they're messing it up and we start basing in this area to decide whether we either go to the downside or we go to the upside or the last scenario is we just trade through this one and maybe go to this and see if that is the one that holds. We would still need a slightly bigger move than we have now. Okay. Almost knocked down my uh, microphone there. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the NASDAQ. Let's look at the Aussie, the Australian stock market. Big move, big, huge move this week not moved out of the range though you can see it's still within that range but it's definitely the one of the one of the biggest up periods in recent weeks in this um in this market so let's see how we get on let's see how we get on with that if it gains traction if it moves to the upside with this one we'll see we'll get direction one way or the other all right all right, so that was the last one. Thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you find the information useful. It's a bit of a slow period in these indices as they base and try to find direction, apart from the ones that have already gone, if you were along those ones, uh, those ones who are just like this one, just staying in a range and not yet decided which direction they want to go. So keep your powder dry and the opportunities will come um, in time. Don't forget to like the video if you find it useful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and share um, the knowledge. Thank you. See you all soon.